All right, so in this lecture, I'm gonna show you guys how to paint gold. Now, we're gonna start from the very beginning, but some things you should know about gold is that, one, um, it is a very warm substance, and its reflections are also going to be very warm. Shadows are gonna be warm. Even if it's in a pretty cool environment, it's going to still radiate quite a lot of warmth. Um, and depending on whether or not it's really polished or reflective will kind of depend on how many reflections it has. But for this example, we're gonna be painting this uh, idol head with a decent amount of specularity or highlight. So to start out, we have our line art layer on and our base layer color, which is going to be this kind of orange brown color. And um, that's what we're gonna start with. So I'm going to be painting on the right and when you get the assignment, to download the one on the left will already be completed and you'll just have to follow along and do the one on the right as well so the first step we're gonna come and make a normal layer and on this normal layer we are going to paint our shadows in okay so I'm just gonna color pick over here so I don't have to spend a lot of time picking the right color so we have a lighter shadow and a darker shadow so first I'm gonna start with the lighter shadow and you're going to um, I'm gonna just use a round brush here, something that anyone should have access to. And we'll kind of switch between this and the airbrush eraser tool. And you're going to come in here and paint the whole thing. I'm gonna go a little fast and it's gonna be a little bit sloppier um, or a little rough on this side just so that we're not here for an hour painting this. Um, but I'll do it well enough that you can kind of see what it should look like. And you do have, you will have the image on the left to use as a reference that I did earlier where you will be able to see all the layers and follow along. Okay. He has a cast shadow from his nose. In his eyes. Cast shadow from his eye ridge, a sort of eyebrow shape. Got the spherical shape of his eyeball itself. And then inside this little indent, top edge of this sort of ridge. All right, that looks good. Um, so get a little bit of shadows down here. Side of his nose there. And you can also go ahead and select the layer underneath so that you make sure that you're not painting outside any of the lines that will make the process go a little bit faster. So all these spikes, for example, I'm probably not gonna end up doing this entire thing here, just for time's sake, but I'll do most of it so you can see. And then you can use the example on the left when you do your assignment. Okay, and then you can get your eraser tool, clean up any edges. You want to make sure that, once again, you're really thinking about where the light is coming from, okay? And the reason we're doing this color is because it's a, it's a warmer shadow color, and if we color pick here, we can see 
The original color is in the orange range, and then our shadow is in about the same spot, and it's very saturated. You see how it's almost all the way over to the right? Um, that's because gold is has a high vibrancy, and it tends to reflect very saturated light. But it's still dark. We're not picking some bright orange, right? We're keeping it. Shadows are still somewhat dark, but they have a lot of warmth to them. And then overall, we're going to shade the bottom half almost like a sphere, just kind of this rounded shape. Okay, and you can also use your eraser tool to come back in once you've done that to erase away any spots that you want to get a little brighter. So teeth, for example, that side will be in shadow with a cast shadow coming down from them as well. And then pretty much just go across the whole image doing the same thing. All right, then I have over here, we have this darker area, this darker color. We're gonna use that to do um, a little bit more definition inside the eyes, the nose, um, any place that you think just needs to get pushed back a little bit more. The bottom here, have it be a little darker, okay? Now we're going to take our eraser tool and along the bottom edge here, because this is a very specular, glossy sort of gold, we want to erase away a little bit of reflected light on any of the planes that face down towards the ground plane. So under the eyebrows, for example, the nose, just erase away that little tiny bit to suggest that there's still some reflected light coming up and hitting the bottom there. I'm going to do the same thing on the spikes on the head. Any plane that's facing down. Okay. That's good enough. Um, oh, and let's do just a little bit on the bottom of his eyes. Okay, next. We're make uh, you would make a new layer. We're gonna go to the next one. This is going to be where we start to do our first layer of lights. Now this is a, going to be a very bright, saturated gold, where the uh, the light is starting to reflect off. So you can see I color picked it over there on the left, and it's very light, very saturated. We're still in the same hue range. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start painting in that light. Now at first it might seem a little weird and look a little off, but it's okay because we're going to be adding more and more layers to kind of bring the colors back to um, balance out the whole image. But for this next layer, we're going with this bright gold. And we'll just go through and paint in all the spots that are getting hit with this light. Now be sure, once again, remember, you need to be thinking about where your light is coming from. Um, depending on the situation, it might be coming from somewhere different, which means the reflections are gonna be different, right? The, um, the reflections are gonna be bouncing off the angle from where the light is coming down to where the viewer is situated. So for a lot of you, that's gonna to be towards the top, middle of a lot of these surfaces and you need to be paying attention to that as you paint, not just guessing. Spots that are really, really prominent or bright, you go a little bit stronger 
a little bit uh, brighter, push a little harder with your stylus to really pop them out a little bit more to the top of the eyebrows, for example. All right, it's looking good. Let's do um, some now on his face here. One option I found is face my paint on Lambton View Drive in Riverton. Is that the one you want? Head up here. Okay, and then a little bit on the cheeks as well. That's good enough. Like I said, we're going really loose and really fast here, but go ahead and take your time. It's not a race. I just want to be able to get all this in. All right, so then we go into the next layer. Next layer is when we start to get a little bit more yellow and bring in a little bit brighter highlight. So I'm going to color pick that so you can see we've moved over a little bit closer to the yellow. It's become a lot lighter and less saturated um, because we're getting into that really bright, shiny light. So this is gonna be pulled back a little bit more so we're not hitting as much um, as much space as we were before with our orange. So I'm gonna bring down my brush size as well just a little bit. I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit more. And everywhere that we just did that orange, we're going to kind of create a little bit of this yellow highlight along the core of it. Okay. So it's coming along pretty nicely. Let's finish up the top of the head here. Now, if you're painting, um, if you're painting an image, and the lighting is a specific way or something different than what you would normally paint, or you're just not quite sure, then just look at reference. We talked about that earlier about how reference is really important. And the more you use reference, the more you'll start to build up kind of an internal library in your brain of. Um, different objects and you won't need to look at reference as much because you will have essentially memorized your reference so it might seem like I'm just painting all this stuff out of my head but it, I'm not I mean I am technically but I've looked at lots of reference and done lots of studies and lots of practice that enables me to do this it, it takes some time to get there though so don't beat yourself up um, if you don't have a perfect memory of bunch of different types of reference it takes a lot of studying to get to that point so if you're painting an image um, this these sort of you know tutorials and stuff are good to help you understand kind of the process to which you can paint them by but it's better if you can look at actual reference on top of it all right we're on to the next layer and this is going to be our f reflected light layer so we're going to come down here color pick this color underneath the nose 
and we're going to come in and paint some of that reflected light in. Now this is going to be a pretty saturated color because it's reflected an already warm light source down or down off of a warm object up onto another warm object and so it's really going to bounce around and create quite a bit of warmth by doing this. So it's fairly saturated. It's not quite as bright as our other light sources because it is reflected light. And so reflected light tends to lose quite a bit of its power when it's bouncing around. Its strength, it gets a lot softer. So underneath the eyebrows here, underneath the eye, And then underneath all these guys over here as well. All right, that looks pretty good. Yeah, a little bit under these as well. All right, and that's our reflected light. Let's move on to the next layer here. So next one is going to be our brightest bright highlights and it's going to be nearly white hot. So I make sure we're on that layer. And let me just check something here. All right, so we have these whites and these are going to be our brightest highlights and this is gonna be basically the same thing, but even more sparingly, just a few key spots that are kind of in the center of where we did these yellow highlights and you know a lot of times less is kind of more you don't need to do these nearly as much as all the other spots and possibly all the yellow might not even need a highlight some areas might be fine without it So there we go with our brightest highlights. Excellent. Now we're going to go into our next layer. We're going to do a few scratches and detailing to kind of add some texture and interest, make it look a little bit more real. So I'm just going to color pick the color that I have for the scratches here. And I'm going to bring my brush down really small to do this. And you can just come along and create some of these. Let's get, make sure we got a little bit darker. There we go. I'm gonna come along and make some of these scratches in the, in the gold here and they can show up as kind of, you know, let's go a little bit darker. They can show up as kind of pock marks in the gold or little scratches like that, cracks. Okay. And then you're going to get this highlight color here and we're going to go along all those edges of those cracks we just made with a really fine brush and just bring out a quick little highlight along the edge like this. Along that bottom edge where it's going to be catching that light. And then a little bit brighter, we're gonna go to that white 
and do just, you want to do it really softly. We're not going to the extreme here, but just catch a little bit brighter edge and sort of the middle of some of these, really bring it out a little more. All right, there we go, that looks pretty good. Go on to the next layer. This layer is going to be set to color dodge. I'm gonna to switch to normal really quick so you can see where I've painted here on the other image. So you see all these orangish brown spots? That's where we're gonna be using this. So I'm gonna color pick that color. It's a reddish sort of brown color, a little bit in the orange rain, but it's pretty saturated. We're gonna turn this back to color dodge. Where is it? There we go, color dodge. And we're gonna use this to go over all the spots where we have a highlight. I'm gonna use a soft airbrush here for this one. And all the spots where we have these bright white highlights, we're gonna go with the color dodge. And what it's gonna do is it's going to drastically bring up the warmth just around that area. You can see we just kind of brush over all those and it really lights things up, makes it feel really warm, really alive. And be careful not to go too overboard with it. All right, there you go. As you can see that makes a pretty good sizable difference and if you need to adjust the set or the opacity, you can make sure it's not too intense. And um, a little bit of an optional thing you can add if you would like to, just kind of a tip that makes your highlights look even brighter and kind of burned in, is if you see right now, uh, we'll go ahead and pick color pick the white here. We got a yellowish white, it's not all the way white, there's a tinge of yellow, but when I turn on this layer, there's a little bit of blue in the middle now. So you can see it's like a blue-green color, and it's hard to see, but see how it's that different, just slightly different hue on the inside of that highlight? Well, that kind of gives it that afterburn effect. I don't know if you've ever looked at the sun. If you haven't, I don't recommend it. It's not a good idea You burn your eyes out. But if you have looked at the sun, it has almost that afterglow effect where it's, it's hard to kind of describe. But this gives that illusion by putting just a hint of this bright blue. Oops, let's go back to our round brush in the center of that highlight. I don't, rem I don't recommend doing this on every highlight, on anything you do, because um, it's going to make it seem really intense. I only do this on really warm, really bright highlights that I really want to pop out. So like this gold, for example, or if I'm painting the sun in an image, I'll do this as well. Put blue, light, 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 light blue in the center and it really just helps it pop out. So this one on the right does look a little bit darker, like maybe it's not in quite as bright of light, and that just depends on how far you go with your different layers. But there you go. That is how you paint gold. So your assignment is going to be to replicate this. You'll have the example on the left, and then yours will be on the right, and then go ahead and turn it into the Q&A or post in the Facebook group. So that's it for this lecture. I'll see you guys in the next one.